Welcome to Sharing Socks, the kind of just before the end of the Crosstown series edition. Uh, I am Southside Sox duty geezer Lee Allen, and with me, my son and West Coast correspondent, Will, except I'm also the West Coast correspondent today because my wife and I are out visiting Will and his wife in uh, sunny California, where it's uh, 98 degrees today. I, I, I think that's that's, mm -hmm. that's that's very warm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're doing this in, in Will's studio, where he, uh, he and his wife shoot auditions. And we are going to go over a few things of White Soxery, just before they invite in the team from the other side of town. First of all, let's get into the 14 games. We were looking forward for a while, 14 games, these are the 14 games going to tell. The White Sox schedule is so, so simple. And it was the week, you know, because of the 14 games against tough teams, they're now all the way up to only the softest schedule in the American League. <laughs> there are National League teams with softer schedules. And heading forward, they also have the softest schedule in the American League, but not necessarily against National League teams because of the National League Central. Yeah. But uh, the 14 games, 7-7 seven, seven split. Uh, but there were strange circumstances in almost all of it. Uh, the Yankee one, of course, had, had Field of Dreams. You had two down to the last incident games that didn't prove anybody was better than anybody else. But where the Yankees were playing without pretty much their entire team, uh, we, of course, were playing without Yasmani Grandal, who is coming back uh, for the Cubs, thank goodness. Uh, in the nick of time, not that we have to win games for the next week and a half, but still, nice to play well. Uh, so it was losing two out of three to the Yankees, despite them missing everybody. And I think they may now be the scariest team uh, for the playoffs. We can. I don't know how the Yankees are doing what they're doing. Um, you know the uh, the pitchers. I, who the hell are they? Uh, and it seems like everybody's still just hurt all the time in New York. It's just a revolving door. We you know understand that in chicago right now but not even on the scale that the yankees have, have had to deal with it over years this is you know yeah they, last year was the same they just got a bunch of guys who are always hurt so uh the yankees are not a team you want to face in these playoffs uh they're just they're booming right now they are they are catching fire at the right time these, and they did that with cole and montgomery out <laughs> and, and this whole right yeah and this whole dog days of summer thing i mean they're they're choosing the time that most teams are fading to heat up and that is usually the sign of a playoff contender uh not just contender but a, a potential uh pennant winner or world series champion uh i would not want to face the new york yankees in the playoffs at all uh, that being said, I don't think we learned a lot about uh, the White Sox up against the Yankees in that series. No. I don't think we're going to really know anything about what that matchup will look like until we see two teams closer to what their lineups are supposed to be. Next, Oakland. And that one became a we can't judge anything about it because we damn near killed their best pitcher in the second inning of game two of a four game series. So while the White Sox took that one nicely, three games to one, I don't know that that was meaningful either. Plus, Chris Bassett out and probably out for the year. There's a real good chance Oakland's not even in the playoffs. Yeah, Oakland, unfortunately, and we've talked about this, I really like the A's organization. Uh, they're in real trouble now. They're, they're probably going to see sort of the decline that we're seeing from the Blue Jays. Uh, and they're just going to start to slowly fade out and fade out. However, it's the Oakland A's, so I don't know. I, they're going to have to dig deep and make something happen to to stay competitive. And, you know, Houston's not been great, but they're not necessarily showing any signs of slowing down. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what will happen with Oakland. That's a team I wouldn't mind facing in the first round of the playoffs, though. No, I, I think that's one we could do very well against. Uh, I don't think we're going to face the wild card, though, because I don't think we're going to have the top seed unless something really dramatic happens in the last month. Yeah. Succession number three of the four, uh, the Rays, who are a very good baseball team. And, and you look at them and you go, why? How? I have <laughs> no idea. And yet they're terrific. I have been saying for, for months that I just don't see. I look at the names on the paper and I just I'm like, wow, this can't, this team can't be this good. 
And of course, you know, it's ignorant of me to think that considering they went to the World Series with a bunch of these same guys last year uh, and they all got a little but bit they better. Lost, they lost but they've lost best pitchers. Pretty much all the pitchers uh, <laughs> at some point. And uh, definitely the two best ones are, are gone for the rest of the year with Snell being traded uh, and uh, Glasnow having Tommy John. Uh, that is a team I do actually think we could beat in a series. But I also guess that that's a team that could beat us four games to none in a series. Yeah, they're... Well, we tied, tied the season series with them three games apiece. And that sounds about right. They do play with a, a similar level of excitement that the White Sox do. It would be a really fun series, I think, in the playoffs, with the exception of the fact that Tampa Bay plays in a large uh, public toilet. Uh, that field is the least exciting place to play baseball in the major leagues right now, Tropicana. Uh, if they even still call it that, I actually don't know. Uh, so it would be a pretty exciting matchup. A Rosarena, of course, versus, you know, Luis Roberts. He, he did essentially nothing during our series. If he gets hot yeah. again come playoff time. A Rosarena, who has been a rookie for most of my adult life, uh, somehow still a rookie, still in contention to be rookie of the year, which he will probably be, unless uh, the guy from Texas – losing his name right now, uh, hits 10 more home runs and he's probably got it, got it on lock. Um, but yeah, so that series, I don't think we learned a lot either. This is a big review of, we didn't learn all that much. Uh, from I think, all this. Yeah, and then we get to the fourth one, which is Toronto. Again, a team probably not going to make the playoffs of Boston. I, I think Boston might have the best chance to hang on and, and Take the second wild card slot because Chris Sale is back. Yeah. Uh, Toronto obviously can hit, obviously has some very serious pitching weaknesses that uh, the White Sox exploited not as easily as one might have thought on Thursday well, after the 9 2 lead. Yeah, I mean, they do. They Toronto does have a pretty solid bullpen. Uh, obviously, they have a ton of great great young talent on that team that team to me is not ready and they are not i don't think they're even going to make the playoffs uh but i think that is a team that in two years we will we will have very different opinions on facing them uh than we do right now that team is going to be a, a force in the al east they're just not quite there yet bichette's not quite there uh, obviously, Guerrero is is major league star quality already, potential MVP if Shohei Otani wasn't the best player of my generation. Uh, but yeah, I think Toronto is is out of the picture. And if we did face them in the playoffs, that's a great matchup for us, uh, as long as we have some relief pitching of some sort somewhere. Which, which gets us to what we maybe did learn during the 14 days. I don't think we looked as we said, we agree. We didn't learn anything team wise, really, because the circumstances were odd a lot of the time. Nobody really blew anybody away other than maybe an individual game here or there. Yeah. Um, but I think we learned some things about individuals. One of those individuals at Collins will no longer be with the team. Uh, and we do desperate back in Spring training, we were saying the most important player on the White Sox is Jasmine Grandal. There are better players, but he's the most important one because we got no backup. And it turns out we have no backup because uh, Sebi did not uh, show us a whole lot during the 14 games either. We did learn, well, we already knew our starting pitching is great. And we even got a six starter out of it with uh, Renato Lopez doing a, a pretty good job uh, filling in for uh, Carlos Rodon during the course of it. We also learned Boy, that bullpen is just, when you think, oh, well, but we've got so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, so we'll be okay. Then so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so pitch the next day and, and can't get anybody out. I have no idea what was with Michael Kopech on, on Thursday. Um, Kopech so is Kopech, and you know maybe we'll talk about this a little more later on as we, as we discuss some of the players, but Kopech is a real big question mark right now in a very concerning way. For me, um, he has not looked good a, a, a few times now recently, and the last outing was just pathetic. I mean, it was it was truly terrible. There, there was some suggestion I read somewhere, and I have no idea if it was true or not, that 
Kopech had complained about being pulled too soon the time before, so Tony let him into rot. Uh, if so, it shows that Tony really needs to retire and, 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 and go away because you don't do that. Too. I, yeah, I don't know if I'm play. buying any of that. Yeah, I, I'm um, not saying I buy it either. I'm, I'm just saying that's why I gave a lot of disclaimer there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that uh, I, I hope that didn't happen. That it was just, well, it happened so fast that the collapse was so quick. Uh, and the suggestion on it that his fastball didn't have movement. I, because your mom and I had been traveling, I have seen very, very little of the last week or week and a half and only been able to follow it on, on game day uh, for the most part. I, the, the talk was that fastball wasn't moving. Uh, I don't know if you saw enough of that. To... I mean, I, I watched some of it, but I, I, you know, I watched some of Kopech's pitching over the last uh, few outings and, you know, they, people can speculate on on the movement of the fastball, I guess. I don't know. It certainly did not look like the video game-esque type of spin that we had been seeing uh, from Kopech on the fastball and the slider. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not convinced that anything's really wrong, um, but I definitely have concerns as we are in, you know, these very hot end days of August heading into September that a guy who hasn't really played all that much uh, is even as a reliever, we haven't started him that much, but is running out of gas. And it's a concern I have for multiple pitchers on the Chicago yes. White Sox right now, uh, including some other members of that bullpen who look like they're fading a little bit as well. Um, we are in a very good place with Ryan Tapera, who is for the White Sox has been what you would consider an elite reliever. After the first uh, two outings. He has only given speak. up one run as a White Sox pitcher. One run. But I think he gave up some on bases. Guys came in the first two times. But since then, Still, nothing. I mean, runs. since then, obviously, uh, has been lights out, which is great. If If we win the World Series, if, even if we make it to the World Series, the deal we made for Ryan Tapera will be considered the best off the best in season or off season deal that really that we made because I, I, we I, gave I, up squat really. I th I think it was one of our better beer vendors that went up to the Cubs for him. What do you mean? I, I mean the guy that we traded the Cubs it was a beer vendor and and, yes. and he was a it's a pretty good uh, beer vendor. It was right? probably Margarita Man because he stopped showing up to my section at games even though we would tip him extra to come back so we had to trade him to the Cubs because you know in Wrigleyville they're just there to drink they're not there to watch baseball a anyway. A margarita at, at Wrigley Field must be like thirty five bucks. Yes, but it does have half a shot of real, almost real alcohol product in it. Ah, well, yeah, there we go. Yeah, absolutely. Which gets left on the sidewalk. So Lakeview, he think. has been really, really exceptional. It's it's so comforting to see him come in in middle relief and just think, all right, we're getting through these this inning. We're getting through this inning and a half or two innings. And you get to the closers, which are a big question mark. I guess I, I think now we're going to see Hendricks pitch the eighth a lot more and Kimbrell close the game. I don't understand why these guys can't pitch any point of any game and still be good at pitching. Uh, it's so weird to me. I, I, I can't say it's an ego thing because Hendricks actually seems like a really delightful, lovely person. And Kimbrell seems uh, fun. And Kimbrell seems like a good guy outside of the weird arm thing, which just makes me automatically think he's insane and uh maybe a douchebag but probably not probably not it's probably just like you know a little shoulder, shoulder problem. yeah it's a little so shoulder problem uh but if you're doing that you can't give up any runs you can't give up any runs if you're going to do the spider arm you can't give up any runs and if you're going to be liam hendrix where you're just screaming and doing all those theatrics you can't give up any runs and right now they are giving up a lot of runs so we really need to see some and, and the man who you and I both, I think, back in the spring, we're going, this is the guy. This is going to be the guy. I don't even know. We probably didn't even need to pick up Hendricks because this is the guy. Aaron Bummer uh, has not been the guy. Man, talk about it. You know, like if you... If you do, a, if you make a movie or a play and for some reason you title it like the long tenuous journey, you're just 
setting up the critics with their <laughs> with their lines. And I feel like with Aaron Bummer's last name being Bummer, he has spent his whole career fighting against the critics being able to call him a Bummer. And now he is just really laying hard into that last name. And he has just accepted and, and allowed the journalists to really latch on to the Bummer that he has been. Yeah, the, the sliders uh, are breaking. They're really breaking. Uh, and sometimes even between first and third base. Um, I, I will say this, and I have no clue why, but I have not given up on Aaron Bummer. I do think Aaron Bummer still has a chance to be a, a really solid reliever. I don't know what's going on. I know nothing about his circumstances in the league this year. He is, I know that he has not been great. I mean, I've watched him pitch, but I do think he could still be a valuable member of this bullpen. And, you know, there, there's some commenters that we get on our game threads and, and elsewhere that we go, well, well yeah, but his FIP is, is much better than his ERA. Yeah, yeah, okay, I don't care. Uh, I, yes, there's bad luck. But the fact is, if every ball is being put into play constantly and being hit fairly hard, uh, fairly often, plus the big problems that he's already walked somebody to put him on base because I, I forget the percentage now, but the percentage of first batters that he faces that get on base is huge, and that's not a remedy. Er, 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 but his FIP, his FIP, <laughs> stat nerds, come on, get over it. Uh, I get it. The stats are important. There are a lot of stats that are really telling. The only stat that matters is the win column and the loss column. You gotta put you gotta put these wins together. Going seven and seven in that streak, I am actually totally okay with. I had fears of going four and ten in that streak, something like that. So coming out of it seven and seven is really good. We gotta take a break real quick. When we come back, we will uh, talk about moving forward, including our delicious. Uh, Crosstown series that we have starting in just a few hours here in LA. Well, At that time that we're recording and maybe almost over by the time uh, it gets up. We don't know. Yeah, don't know. Uh, so we'll be right back on Sharing Socks. Welcome back to Sharing Socks. Uh, we've talked about the last two weeks, kind of broken down how much we didn't really learn. Uh, the good things that have happened for sure are that Yasmani Grandal is going to come back uh tonight zach collins is going to go away yay sebi zavala needs to be thanking whatever bigger entity that he believes in because that guy did everything in his power in the last few days to not make the team it was like the three home run game was the epitome of life which it may well have been of his baseball life and that really after that it was well I don't know what else I need to do here. Yeah, I I want Sebi to be good. I want him to be yeah. good so badly. Great, but particularly because it keeps Zach away. Yes, exactly. I'm sorry, Zach. I know you get crapped on a lot, but it's time to go back to the minors. Maybe you'll work on it down there and you'll get better at catching, better at hitting. But as of right now, you don't actually do anything that well in baseball. Better than me, of course, I will admit. Uh, but we just weren't seeing the results. Zach, I hope you go down to the minor leagues, find your stride, start nailing it on defense. But, you know, I, I don't have high hopes for it, but I hope it happens. I hope you can be one of our guys in the future. Grandal coming back is absolutely the key to this team being healthy. a real contender. I, I'm, I'm going to make a guess right here that he doesn't catch two days in a row uh, for the next couple of weeks. I think what you do with Sebi Zavala is just run him into the ground going into the playoffs just to keep Grandal out from behind the plate and healthy. You just pound Sebi, you put him back there as much as you can and, and let Grandal rest because you have to have Yasmani Grandal for the playoffs. Yeah, you, you need working to. the knee enough that it's in shape and not stiffening up or anything, but you of need course. to also be it so that you take as few chances as possible yeah. with them getting entry between uh, now and October. And I think this series this weekend is a great one to uh, just, you know, ease Yasmani back into it. 
We are playing a team that someday will resemble a Major League Baseball team. Um, anything less than a sweep this weekend is pathetic, uh, I think. Well, their pitchers, in fairness, we are facing the better pitchers that they have available, uh, including Hendricks on Sunday. And Hendricks can be absolutely like Hendricks up. is still legit, yeah. Um, offensive. <laughs> I mean, there's just not much offense there. So pitching guys, bullpen, chance to show off, do really well. Yeah, this is a good round of practice against those Cubs hitters who are lackluster, to say the least. That team. Get, a, get an immaculate cool. inning. Did you see Chris Sale just got his third immaculate inning of his career? He's the second person in history to do that. Wow. It seems like that would have been done more often. It does seem like that would have been. It just, it just, just seems like a lot of guys would just come up and blow nine strikes by. Him. Especially yeah. nowadays, you would th- you would think. Yeah, but uh, I guess especially so. earlier this season, you would have thought a bunch of guys did it when the yeah. spider attack was was at its peak. That there would have been, you know, three three or maybe every pitcher in nineteen sixty nine. It was right. Yeah, uh, but that that's an odd one. That's a wild stat, and that is an impressive stat as well. Uh, Chris Sale, we miss him, but we got not this. much. We, we got good stuff. We, we did okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll, I'll, I would. Which brings us, brings us to the hitters. Um, obviously, had a couple games in Toronto who just absolutely crushed the ball and did the intelligent thing of crushing the ball all on the same inning uh, or two, which makes it more run scored. The one where we scored five in the first. And then had 16 hits. <laughs> that was the offense. Uh, that was maybe a not a total demonstration of offense or prowess. Um, a little more so uh, on, on Thursday when he spread out the nine runs uh, and then got the 10th, the uh, Aloy's homer. Aloy's hitting well, you know, Aloy's hitting very well. Robert. Luis is hitting really, really well. I mean, the uh, to me, one of the best signs we've had is that Luis Robert has come back and it's just been on a tear. I mean, he's he's seeing the ball really well. He's going up, wanting to take away pitches to the opposite field. He is doing exactly what we need Luis Robert to be doing. He should comfortably fit into that number two spot for the rest of the year in the playoffs when you have a guy with lightning speed. You want him right after Tim Anderson. You want him pounding those doubles into the gap to bring Tim home. Uh, As Jason pointed out, the crazy difference between uh, how many runs we score in an inning where Tim Anderson scores versus an inning where Tim Anderson doesn't score is a shocking gap. Uh, (laughs) It's crazy. It's really wild. It's so important, and I think it's crucial that Robert be in that number two spot right behind him. The only only thing that I could see switching that – is because you'd have three straight right-handed hitters. Sure, yeah. Uh, and I know Tony doesn't like to do that, and most managers these days don't like to do that because they want to make sure that when somebody has to face three people in a row, they're facing th- somebody in there that's a yeah, the more desirable hand. Uh, right field, Brian Goodwin, you know, I just really hope that Adam uh, Angle comes back. Uh, he's, I haven't, have you seen anything when he's due? I have not seen an update on, on when exactly he should be back. Because I think that's that's when the outfield becomes really good. Really good. Uh, and then you then you can uh, you can make Aloy and, and, and Andrew Vaughn switch off at uh, designated hitter. Uh, Vaughn, who I think we could see play every position by the end of this yeah, year. Yeah, he, he play, 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 obviously give Jose some days uh, to just be the DH, even though D, uh, Jose doesn't like it. He probably could use a little rest on the old yeah, legs there absolutely. Uh, now and again. Uh, Andrew Vaughn is really, really uh, such a great success story with this team. His numbers are not out of this world. They're great for a rookie. They're really solid for a rookie. He's probably going to end up around fifth in rookie of the year voting. And against left-handers. And against left-handers, he's one of the best in baseball, which is wild. His defense in positions he had never played before has been fine, uh, which is an incredible thing to say about a guy who never played the outfield and then gets put out there in the majors. 
And the fact that, you know, he still takes some fun routes to the ball. Yeah, there's, and, there's, there's um, creativity. But what's ball. crazy is he comes up with it. And, uh, you know, I'm just so impressed with this opportunity he had. Honestly, I think a lot of the White Sox success is due to Vaughn being an above average player in his rookie year when he was really probably a year away from being major league ready. And he comes up and, and makes the best of it. I, I mean, I am, I'm so impressed by what he's done. I think he's only going to get better. Uh, and he has been such a, a huge part. I, I'm glad to see that he is going to stay on this team and he's going to be on this team through the playoffs. Uh, and that, you know, if, if we need him in left field, he's, he's probably going to catch the ball. Not a great arm, not a good enough arm for sure to be in right field. But we've also seen him make some pretty great catches of balls tailing away the hardest type of ball to catch if you haven't played right field before. And he's done a pretty good job. Uh, Aloy seems to be a bit reinvigorated trying to hold on to his job out there in left field. Oh, yeah. You know, much quicker than he used to be. He's not been uh, amazing by any means. Hasn't hurt anybody. But he hasn't hurt anybody, including himself. Uh, he seems to fully understand that if Luis Robert is anywhere near the ball, you just let Luis get it and tail off and let him know that it's his. Uh, but once we get Angle back, the outfield is going to look really good. Left fielders don't have to be great. So Vaughn and Aloy in left field is probably fine. Then you have Luis in center, one of the best defenders in the league. Angle in right, one of the best outfielders in the league. That is a fierce outfield to take into the playoffs. And you, that you get to put Leori back to just being a utility man, which is what he should be. Except for the fact that Danny Mendick just when Larry Garcia <laughs> starts games, the White Sox are the best team in baseball. Yeah, well, so that's true. I don't know how you can mentally prepare, prepare yourself for that little bit of uh, statistics there. Uh, you certainly can't say, okay, well, then Lurie starts every day because nothing <laughs> allows you to accept that in your brain. Uh, but you also can't ignore it. And the guy plays hard. He's been looking pretty good lately at the plate. And, uh, you know, he's, he's valuable. Uh, Cesar Hernandez, of course, will continue to be the starting second baseman moving forward. There's just some peace of mind there, I think, uh, defensively with him and seeing him get on base multiple times yesterday uh, and yeah. also having the home could, run. Could have been a freak, but uh, we hope not, and that he's out of the slump he was in. I did look up, uh, before we went on, his uh, deed war. And his deed war since coming to the Sox is positive. It had been negative. And of course, he was a Golden Glover last year, which I think was kind of freaky, but he was. Uh, but... Danny uh, Mendick was a finalist last yeah, year. So it, it, it had been negative, but he had been negative uh, with the Indians, and now he's turned positive with the Sox. So that's a good thing. Uh, that and he's 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 flashed some fascinating leather from time to time. Also around the infield, uh, Yuan, you know, you know, you never know. Uh, Yuan under these, oh gosh, Yuan, he's really tired. He's worn out, and then he hits a double, a triple, and then. Uh, makes a couple of incredible stabs and throws from his back. Foot. I mean, I, I do think it's still safe to say that Yuan is has not come back to 100% in the legs yet. I think last year he was in way worse shape than he was even letting on uh, after COVID, and his legs clearly aren't there. Yuan Moncada is a guy who can hit the ball 500 feet, and we're just not seeing that power really yet. And that's a big sign that the legs aren't quite there yet. Also, just some of these sort of lazy errors that we're seeing from him lately of just pulling up from the ball and not getting down, that's a sign that the legs are tired as well. He's not getting down to, to go get the ball. He's trying to let the ball come up to him. He's pulling up. He's pulling away from the ball. I still think that we are seeing Yuan at its best around 80% of, of what he's capable of. If I were them, I would actually sit you on uh, again in some of these lighter matchups that don't matter just to let him rest so that he can be ready to go for the playoffs because he will be a key key factor. And I do anticipate a, a rush of adrenaline and, and whatnot to, to help him as we get closer to the finish line. But this next month for the White Sox, as we sit in a division that is really only laughable uh, in a lot of ways, the key 
is going to be rest. He uh, is going and like, to be and rest. And Lauri can obviously play for him, as, as he's done many times. And apparently, uh, there is some rule, and I'm not sure what it is, some contractual clause that says we can never get rid of Jake Lamb for as long as we live. Uh, and he's a third baseman by trade. So, uh, How is Jake Lamb still around? I can't. I'm Andy so Mendix confused gun, Jake by Lamb's still there. I, I, I don't know. Which I, you know, I can't necessarily argue that. No, it's not like I got to say we got to keep Danny Mendick. But but why is Jake Lamb still around? He came in to pinch hit the other night, and I was just like, "You're what? You're still here? You where? What is going on?" And I, I, I Tony the, loves him. I guess. I guess the Tony Old Boy Network. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I, I don't despise Jake Lamb for any reason. I'm sure he's a nice person. And occasionally he has hit Undoubtedly big home runs to, for us. Undoubtedly kind to children. And, and uh, but my goodness, whenever he's on the field now, I, I just can't believe he's still on the team, which is how I've always felt about Zach mm-hmm. Collins. And now, fortunately, I won't have to worry about that. What's your prediction for this weekend before we have to go? I'd like to predict a sweep. Uh, because we so cool just sweep the whole season from let let's say we can. and we're we're on the south side this time too. Oh, yeah. Let's settle for two out of three. We we'll certainly take two out of three. I'm taking the sweep. All right. I'm taking the sweep, and I'm not just taking it because of my disdain for the Cubs. Uh, I just oh, we're a much better team. There's I just no think about this that. is this is a, a series you just can't lose because you're too good to lose it. And I think not only are we going to see a sweep. But I'm going to say two of the three games are royal ass kickings. I think we are going to. Oh. I think one of those games is going to be a home run derby for the White Sox, where we just see Robert round them, Tim round them, Jose round them, Aloy round them, Yasmani round them. I, I think it is just going to be an absolute slugfest. One of those games. I don't know which one, uh, but I would be shocked if there is not a game where the White Sox hit five home runs. Five. That is, oh. I know it's a that's a lot, but also they it's are at hot. home against a team that has been held above them forever, and they are so much better than the Cubs right now that I I do actually think we are going to see five home runs in one game from the White Sox. That's my big prediction. My other prediction is we are going to see at least one game where the Cubs have three hits or less. I think we are going to see one game where the Cubs have three hits or less. I yeah. don't know that we'll get a full no hitter or anything like that. I don't think anybody's. It's so hot out and everyone's so tired. A no hitter seems unlikely. Uh, although that Diamondbacks kid did it in his first ever major league start last week, which was pretty darn cool. Uh, but yeah, so I am predicting a a monster sweep and a lot of long balls uh, sailing over the pinwheels. Maybe not all the way over the pinwheels, that, that, that's, that's uh, but, but heading to the pinwheels. And who knows, if Aloy gets a hold of the right pitch, we may see the pinwheel actually spin for once because it got hit so hard by an Eloy Jimenez home run. We'll see what happens. Um, but yes, we will, uh, we will be back next week, um, potentially closer to our usual time, a Wednesday, Thursday type thing. Uh, and I expect the White Sox to still be in first place. I have not. I, I think that's pretty. Simple. I have not. Well, next week they better still be in first place. Um, I have not completely just said we are guaranteed to win this division yet. However, the collapse that would have to happen would be so brutal. I don't think you'll hear from us for the rest of the year uh, <laughs> if if it goes down that way. So, uh, any final thoughts before we go? Yeah, yeah, it comes. All right. Thanks so much from your West Coast correspondent, your honorary West Coast correspondent, Duty Geezer. Uh, thanks for listening to Sharing Socks, and we will see you next time.